Okay, I've been uh, thinking about this for a while. I mean, it's interesting uh, sitting here in South Africa, especially in the rural areas, and, and, and observing stuff. Well, no, let me put this way. I've been in South Africa since uh, 2003. And um, so my view of South Africa is one thing, and also the United States, because I don't get my news news from the regular sources. I have to look around, and because of the internet, it's, it's a little bit better now. Anyway, there's a lot of, I don't say parallels, but a lot of similarities, something with South African politics and American politics. To give you just a, a slight example, um, I, I, there's a, a person, like when I first got to South Africa, uh, I kept on seeing headlines that said, Zuma, Zuma, Zuma. The other politician is this thing from uh, Democratic Alliance called uh, um, um, Helen Zilla. She said, Zilla, Zuma, Zilla, Zuma. Then, this, then, then what happened, something happened with the ANC. Zuma's part of the ANC and African National Congress. And what happened with them is that uh, uh, Zuma's always, she was, he was the vice, whatever, I'll say vice president, you know, whatever the, the, the thing is, um, under, uh, under Tabo and Becky. And um, as part of the thing that happened with that whole thing is that they had a, they have a thing called the ANC Youth League, and there was a guy in charge called Julius Milano. And so all this early in the, uh, the 2004, 5, 6, 7, somewhere in the 8, somewhere around, somewhere around there, maybe it's a little bit, uh, little bit after, um, or somewhere around there, uh, the, the ANC kicked um, Malema out of the ANC Youth League, which is the youth branch of the, uh, of the ANC. And they basically kicked them out. Yeah, get out of here. We're, you have no use for you. You're a big mouth. Whatever, whatever the, the conflict was. So he leaves, and he's, he's, he's got a lot of political savvy, and he started his own group called the Economic Freedom Fighters. Okay, so that's happening. Meanwhile, Zuma becomes president. Okay, now I'm just going to take a, a... Zuma is like, if you want to think of Zuma, think of, uh, think of Bill Clinton and Donald Trump roll into one. That's that's basically Zuma. So, so, so when you when we say Trump, uh, well, was, uh, South Africa had their, their their not as bad, but they had their Trump already with uh, with Zuma. Zuma's that precursor to to uh, uh, to Trump. Uh, anyway, I want to get to all this stuff, but just, just the background you have to research that for yourself. See, see what I'm talking about. That. Meanwhile, Malema came on the scene with the EFF, and what they did, they actually saved South African politics because what they did, what Julius Malema did, almost single-handedly, he moved to South Africa was going to root, you know, the neo liberal, whatever it is, going the route of, of capitalism. They, they, they're a whole hog capitalism anyway. I don't know why they went that route because they had a choice, but we won't get into that point. Um, so, so they went whole hog ca capitalism, and it was going so far to the right. It was amazing. But when Malema came on and started just talking, he pulled them back. So he basically saved South African politics from a, a, an ultra right. Um, uh, neo, well, I guess they're still neo liberal, you know, I like, can't these neo colonialists because, well, they are, they're doing a bidding, bidding of the colonialists, but it doesn't matter. The point is, he saved them, he pulled it back, and now people are really talking about more leftist kind of things, you know, uh, taking back the land, blah, 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 what's that stuff. Okay, now let's hold that for a second. Let's go to the current, you know, scene in the United States, uh, 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 Alexander Ocasio Cortez. Now, it's interesting, her process. Not like the not like the not like the process here because she was picked by a group called the Justice Democrats, uh, and they, they did it really by you you, you nominating your in your in your community who you think would be a good Justice Democrat, and they get it, they send that information up to the to the parent group, and then they say well we'll we'll help this person run. So that's how she got on board of running. Just but she has a background in, in a bunch of stuff, community and all this stuff. Just like just like say Malengo had a background in in in, uh, in ANC youth league, so he has a background in politics and organizing all this stuff. Well, Alexander Ocasio Cortez has the same thing. It comes from a small district, so it was easier for her to uh, to uh, to win the vote. And also, he was, she was up against a, a, a guy incumbent that was just totally out of out of touch with his community. It had the demographic demographics had changed, whatever have you. But the important thing about the what I'm talking about, the Malema and, uh, 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 and uh, Ocasio-Cortez, is that she basically pulled, is pulling the Democratic Party back from that, that, that right-wing way, that, that neo-colonial way, and pulling them back more towards the populist, more towards a social democratic, whatever you want, more towards a people-orientated politic, which is fascinating to me. It's just, it's just super how one person, in, in the South Africa case, it was Malema, one person in, in, in the United States case is, is Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez pulling back 
pull, just pull them back. Now, of course, Malema, uh, he's, he's in parliament right now, but I don't think he's making a lot of uh, policy or whatever have because the system is different uh, to, to affect the, the citizens. But his, his rhetoric makes people start thinking and, and, and talking a certain way. Uh, um, Ocasio-Cortez, on the other hand, she's part of a Democratic Party, even though they don't want her there. And she can, and she's on, she's on a committee, a finance committee, some kind of finance committee. Uh, but she will be able to influence and set poli poli uh, policy, even now when she's not even doing anything. She's just a congressman, a young congressman, 29 years old. And, and she's affecting so much like change, people, the way people talk. You know, just about the economic system, whatever, which is what we really need. So, so, so the parallels are kind of interesting. And uh, young people, I believe in young people. All these old heads, these, 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 I don't even know why they're still there. Sit down. Even Zuma's trying to come back, even though he's been uh, ousted from office or whatever. He's still trying. Everybody's trying to. It don't make no sense. These old people. What's the matter with them? Hey. Do something. Be advisors. I'm, 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 we're sitting in the sus hut, and I have a group of young people that, that, that come here and they talk. And they, they, this, this is a sus hut that's dedicated to, as Neely Fuller would say, a thought, speech, and action. Thought, speech, and action. So they think about stuff. They come here. They discuss it, and then they put into action. That's what. That's the object of the sus hut. That they put into action. So first, you have to have a thought. Then you have to be able to articulate what's going on, and and and, that, and, and research, and and, and have an analysis about, about your circumstance, and then you can do some action. So that's what we're dedicated to. But my uh, thing with this, I just built the place, and I just give them some. I don't even. I'm not even here for the meetings. Luckily for me, they speak in closer. You see, so they speaking closer. That makes me. That makes sure that I'm not a part of the discussion. Therefore, all the young people can really talk to each other because as soon as you have an older person in the crowd, uh, there's a demeanor changes. All I, I can tell you stories, you know. Demeanor changes, uh, they have to defer to the elder, whatever have you. So I'm never in the mean. I come in, I sneak in sometimes, and then, you know, at some point I might give a point or two uh, uh, about what they were talking about and something to improve their fundraising or something like that. But then I'm, I'm leaving them. But most of the, all the ideas come from them. I'm just either just saying, well, that sounds good, but think about this, that kind of thing. That's what, that's what an elder, that's what an advisor does. So that, that's what I think all old people should do, they should be advisors. And just in case you don't know, I'm the person that's advocating the voting age of South Africa from being from, well, I've changed, I started at 14 because that's what Madiba says, but changing from 16 to 66. That's the voting, that's, that's, that's your voting age, those people that can vote. Anybody over 66 can't vote no more. Under 16 can't vote. I advocate the same thing for the United States of North America. Voting age, 16 to 66. After 66, can't vote no more. That means you can't hold office. You just gotta convince somebody, you see, you gotta convince some voter to, to deal with, with, with your policy and whatever have you. I know it sounds strange, it's hard for the United States, but think about this. Because old people, they have a whole different kind of thing. Young people, they have a different kind of thing. And, and, and when you have these uh, folks that are very old trying to tell young people what to do when they don't understand the young people's circumstance, it gets crazy. I'm going to go off just a little bit, um, tiny, 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 tiny bit. Uh, no, I won't. I won't because then I'll just we'll lose the, the thread. Anyway, so that's, that's a little uh, message for me or a little observation. Yeah, from me, T, from the palace is taking the train to Tibet. Let you know what I only suspect from the from the sussa.